Hi, I'm Lee Gatiss and this is Lee on the Lectionary. And this week we're looking at the lectionary readings for Epiphany 3, the third week of Epiphany in Year A. And those readings are Isaiah chapter 9 verses 1 to 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 10 to 18, and Matthew chapter 4 verses 12 to 23. And this week our readings unfold the power of the gospel to bring light and healing to those who believe. There was gloom, there was anguish, there was deep darkness for the people of Zebulun and the people of Naphtali in the northern regions of Israel's promised land. Conquest and exile had brought that land into contempt in the days of Isaiah. And even as the glory of the, the prophet, the prophet uh, foresaw great glory beginning to dawn in that area, even as it came, the people were still saying of one of those towns, can anything good come from Nazareth? Yet it was precisely in that lowly, mixed up place, Galilee overrun by the Gentiles, that God's light would shine. God's plan to bring together a people for himself would begin to bear fruit right here. This region was favoured by the first preaching of our Saviour, which brought life and joy to all those who heard. Many years of tumult and tension were ended as they heard the word of truth. Their rejoicing was like that of labourers who finally enjoy the harvest they have longed and worked for. They've arduously reaped it, and so can rejoice. Or it's like the rejoicing of a victorious army after long and wearisome battles. Their chains fell off, their hearts were free. Matthew chapter 4, our Gospel reading today, narrates how Christ made his home amongst the people of Galilee and proclaimed to them the good news that the kingdom of heaven has come near. His call to repentance was addressed first to the ordinary working people of a neglected northern backwater. The Lord began looking for his people, not in the palace of Herod or in the temple offices of Caiaphas, but in the smelly, sweaty harbours of Simon and Andrew, James and John. He chooses the weak things of the world to shame the strong, and it may seem foolish to some, but there is unfathomable wisdom in the divine plan. Matthew Henry, uh, in his commentary, says that diligence in an honest calling is pleasing to Christ, and it is no hindrance to a holy life. Idle people are more open to the temptations of Satan than to the calls of God. These fishermen certainly proved open to Christ's call as they left their nets and followed him. And although God's call is always solely by grace, uh, quite apart from any supposed merits foreseen in us, their actions on that day perhaps suggested their future usefulness. Peter and Andrew cast a net into the lake, so the Lord calls them to be fishers of men. James and John were mending their nets, and though the text here is not explicit about it, one wonders if Matthew is alerting us to the healing, uniting vocation of the apostles, whose words would be the foundation of the church and its unity in him. Jesus's ministry, in any case, was one of literal healing, we're told, as he travelled the area curing every disease and sickness. Paul's appeal in 1 Corinthians to the divided Gentile church in Corinth is certainly an example of applying the gospel to heal the divisions of God's people. In the face of man-centred factionalism, I follow Paul, I follow Apollos, or perhaps the most sanctimonious of the lot, I just follow Jesus. Paul urges them to be of one mind and purpose. That unity should focus on the message of the cross. 
and its power to save all those who believe. And their purpose should be to bring light to their city by proclaiming that glorious truth. So Paul calls on the Corinthians to be united, to mend their tearing nets. He uses, in fact, the same Greek verb in verse 10 as we saw in Matthew chapter 4, verse 21, just now. Those who agree on the apostolic preaching of the cross can put aside their other differences by a unity of affection and purpose. Though, of course, without such foundational consensus in the truth, both unity of purpose and affection remain perilously weakened and resist being knit together. So let us pray for light and for healing to come to the church and through us to the world.